Travel consideration provided by. Research shows people remember commercials with nostalgia. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's one that'll really take you back. It's customized home insurance from Liberty Mutual. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. It's ingrained in me. Ba -bum -bum -ba. Da -da 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 -da. This is entertainment tonight. This is the Bible of show business. <laughs> Well, our girl Kaylee Cuoco has barely slowed down since she wrapped up The Big Bang Theory. She's got her HBO Max series, The Flight Attendant, which I love. Oh, it's addicting. So good. But Kaylee does allow herself a little relaxation. She treats herself to a beauty treatment or two, and that includes whew, giving new meaning to beauty is pain. Take a look, everybody. Ooh, I love you, Kaylee. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <but laughs> I am absolutely wrecked. I don't even know how to function right now. <laughs> My hips and legs hurt 24 seven. Look at her, she's just scraping at me. A super painful Asian massage technique called gua sha or scraping is Kaylee's go-to way to recover from months of intense workouts like these. I got my ass handed me there. So gua sha is an ancient tool that's been around for over 3,000 years. You know, you're really trying to break up the muscle or the tension. You definitely might be a little sore the next day. So the cost can be anywhere between 120 and 175. You gotta take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of the things around you. Oh. Live from Case at 12, the news at five starts right now. Let's begin with a live look outside with live cam. Lots of gray skies out there, some sprinkles, and the temperatures are starting to fall. Let's head over to a meteorologist Adam Kasky with the very latest. Adam? Yeah, within one hour, we went from 72 degrees down to 55 degrees in San Antonio. Taking a look at the radar out there, and you can see most of the activity here is in and around Bear County and some locations to the east and northeast. So it's mostly in Bear County and surrounding counties as well. You go down to the Floresville area, Pleasanton, even down into Frio County, and we have a little bit of activity, but especially uh, Bear County, the south side and southeast side of town here, that's where we have some good soaking rainfall at this hour. And this is going to continue to come and go through the night and really just become more widespread later tonight. Moving into Stone Oak, a little downpour, and even toward Leon Valley, you've got a quick hit of rain. This is going to be some fairly brief stuff right now, but later on tonight, it's going to overspread all of South Texas and we'll all get in on the action. Rain chances are increasing as the hours go by. Look at the temperature change out there. 40s in the hill country, 70s along the coastal plain, 75 Pleasanton, 45 in Kerrville and Fredericksburg, 76 in Catula and 55 in Uvalde. That's the cold front that's plunging southward. So get ready for a cold rain tonight and even into Thursday. And some of that cold will translate into snow as well. We're going to talk about that for the locations that'll get snow coming up. Isis. Thank you, Adam. First at five, a man shot and killed outside of his home in a northwest side gated community last night. And today there are more questions than answers in this case. Neighbors say they heard the gunfire outside the home on Brent Cove, but who pulled the trigger right now? Still unknown. Devin Clark spoke to one man who says he and others tried to resuscitate the victim as his life slipped away. It was uh, quite a shock for something like this to happen in this neighborhood. Last night around 9 o'clock, San Antonio police say that this quiet cul-de-sac in the fine Silver Ranch community was the scene of deadly gun violence. This is the last place that you would think uh, a shooting would happen. Officials have not released the victim's name yet, but one neighbor who didn't want to be identified says though he didn't know the victim well, he appeared to be a loving son and father. Didn't have any problems with the neighbor at all. Just a good guy, had a couple of daughters. Just before the shooting, SAPD says the victim walked outside to take a call and noticed a suspicious truck driving in front of his house. Police say the victim confronted the driver who fired two shots then sped away. We're told neighbors, including the one we spoke to today, began life-saving efforts, but EMS pronounced the victim dead at the scene. They taped the uh, crime scene off, uh, got their investigators in here. While the motive is still unknown, neighbors are convinced the details will soon come to light. I feel very confident that Fine Silver Ranch is a safe community. It will continue to be a safe uh, community. Uh, I have no, no doubts that this uh, criminal action will, will eventually be prosecuted. 
The neighbor we spoke to says most of the homes on that street have surveillance cameras. We also noticed surveillance cameras pointing towards cars entering and exiting the community. Of course, police looking towards those cameras for clues. But in the meantime, if you do have any information, you're asked to call SAPD's homicide unit at 210-207-7635. Reporting on the northwest side, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Some news just into our newsroom. A man is facing murder charges in an overnight deadly shooting. Police tell us 33-year-old Kevin Lee Perez was arguing with his girlfriend when he fired several rounds. Police say one of the bullets hit the victim driving by in his vehicle. This all happened in the 7700 block of Oakdale Drive. The victim then crashed about five miles down the road at Moss Rock and Robin Hill Drive. Officers found him dead with a gunshot wound to his upper body and severe head trauma. We are still waiting for Perez's mugshot. One man is dead and three others injured after a single vehicle crash in New Braunfels. It happened just before midnight last night at the intersection of South Business 35 and McQueenie Road. Police tell us the Ford Explorer lost control and rolled over. The driver was ejected from the vehicle and died at an area hospital. He was identified as 47-year-old Carl James Donaldson. Police are still investigating the cause of the crash. Cleanup is underway today after an overnight fire ripped through a two-story home just north of downtown. This happened around 3 o'clock this morning in the 700 block of Marshall Street. We're told that fire quickly spread from the first floor to the attic, making it difficult for firefighters to put those flames out. A large part of the home was destroyed and damages are estimated to be around $60,000. No one was home at the time. It's still unclear right now what caused the fire, but crews say the investigation has been handed over to arson. The fight over more stimulus money for struggling Americans appears to be far from over. Right now, we'll show down on Capitol Hill as lawmakers haggle over whether to boost the $600 stimulus payments to $2,000. This, as many Americans are starting to receive round two of those government funds, ABC's Faith Abube explains when we could see a decision on the extra money. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell pushing ahead with a proposal full of President Trump's latest demands. But the move likely to derail Trump's own calls for $2,000 per American stimulus checks. The Senate will begin a process to bring these three priorities into focus. McConnell filing new legislation binding the boosted direct payments to two unrelated matters Democrats were calling poison pills. What we're seeing right now is Leader McConnell trying to kill the checks the $2,000 checks. McConnell's bill ensures a vote on the stimulus checks would also mean a decision on a committee to investigate election fraud and repealing protections for social media companies, all Trump demands. What's next? Unclear after the Senate Majority Leader shot down two efforts by Democrats to vote on direct payments alone. It's amazing to see the patience that some people have with other people suffering. As more stimulus money stalls in Congress, the much needed second round of relief finally on the way to struggling Americans. The Treasury Department saying it started issuing direct deposits overnight. And starting Wednesday, paper checks were on the way. Individuals who qualify should expect up to $600. The IRS adding if new legislation provides additional stimulus money, it would quickly top the payments. Senator Bernie Sanders threatening a vote on the $2,000 checks or he'll hold up another priority vote to override Trump's veto on the annual defense bill. The president is also dialing up the pressure on his own party to get a deal done on the stimulus check, tweeting, unless Republicans have a death wish, they must pass the $2,000 checks ASAP. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Well, in Bear County, we are still seeing a rise in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. Last night, Mayor Ron Nuremberg announced 975 more people are now fighting the virus and 11 more people have died. Hospitalizations continue on a steady incline. The city is reporting 1,116 people are in the hospital locally. 314 patients are in intensive care and 170 people are on ventilators. Be sure to tune in to the news at 6 for the latest report from the city. Also new at 5, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf received his first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Judge Wolf says he wanted to demonstrate to the community how important it is to get the vaccine. He says this is a safe procedure and is the best way to keep our community safe. Uh, so I wanted to demonstrate as a county leader, emergency leader for the county, that this is a safe uh, vaccine, 
That is something all of us uh, will be doing. Anyone who is 65 and older is now eligible for the vaccine. No walk-ins and no appointments by phone. That's the word from HEB. It's been almost a week now since 44 HEB pharmacies here in San Antonio received doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. They've been going to frontline health care workers that make up the state's phase 1A. The state just announced people in phase 1B are allowed to be vaccinated, but at San Antonio HEBs, those folks will have to wait a little longer. Phase 1B includes people over 65 and people over 16 with at least one chronic illness. HEB spokesperson Julie Bedenfield said today they are still phase one. Uh, they are there are still phase 1A health care workers on waiting lists to receive that vaccine. We now have um, the guidance to begin moving into 1B. Once we have supply of the vaccine, we're looking to launch an online web scheduler. So individuals can go to hv.com's pharmacy page and schedule their vaccine that way. People are being asked to use that online scheduler instead of calling the pharmacy to schedule appointments. And tonight at six, we explain why it's so crucial people make appointments and don't just walk in to receive the vaccine. New at five, unless they're familiar with the more than 50 year old tradition, many may not realize this is the fourth day of Kwanzaa. A celebration of African American heritage and perseverance. Kwanzaa in Swahili means first, as in the first fruits of the harvest. Jesse Degollado shows us how the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum has taken Kwanzaa virtual. Posted on SACAM's YouTube channel, symbolized by the Kinara with seven candles, each nightly program teaches one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa, among them self-determination, or in Swahili. The principle of Kuchijakalia means to speak for ourselves, define ourselves, to think for ourselves. Black lives matter! A principle dramatically portrayed by the protest that erupted worldwide in the wake of George Floyd's death. Enough is enough. We have to stand up for who we are. As a people, we cannot let anyone define us. We have to be able to define ourselves. A non-religious observance, Kwanzaa offers not only guiding principles, but also an opportunity to bond with others and remember. Something that I think that brings value, history, culture, um, and that's something that we really should focus on and celebrate. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Speaking with the holiday theme here, our KSAT community partners are highlighting a magical drive through experience this holiday season. Without having to leave your car, you and your family can enjoy an illuminated journey to the North Pole with a mile-long light display that surrounds the AT&T Center. The event runs through January 3rd with gates opening daily at 6 p.m. Half of the proceeds are donated to Spurs Give. Spurs Sports and Entertainment's nonprofit partner. To find out ticket prices and times available, just head over to our website at ksat.com. And 2020, of course, has been a year like no other. And we want to show you 2020 through the eyes of KSAT. From COVID-19 to protests, hurricanes, and the election, we want to share some of the memorable moments from our newsroom. You can watch our hour-long primetime special, 2020 through the eyes of KSAT, tonight at 7 o'clock. You can also stream it on our website, ksat.com. Of course, New Year's Eve is tomorrow, and many will be celebrating with alcohol, but health experts want you to be careful. After the break, the new discovery found by researchers at UT Health on how alcohol affects our brain. That story next. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Blue Ribbon Auto Collision Center. On behalf of all the owners at Blue Ribbon Auto Collision, we would like to thank all the men and women in the armed forces and first responders, thank you for your service and sacrifice. God bless you, and we would like to wish you a, a Merry Christmas. Christmas. If you have plans to ring in the new year tomorrow night, be careful when doing so with alcohol. While we all know how alcohol affects us, researchers at UT Health have discovered how it does it. Sarah Costa explains. We've seen how alcohol can impair one's abilities to do things, but there may be a deeper explanation as how it impacts our decision making. We are particularly interested in a, in a cell type in the brain. It's called astrocytes that 
support um, neurons, um, but they form also a network throughout the brain. He says the astrocyte rely on a transmitter of sorts that releases a chemical, norepinephrine, when you are active, but it can be affected by alcohol. One of the main effects of alcohol is that it um, inhibits the release of this chemical. And while they studied this network in the part of the brain that impacts motor skills, they discovered that this same network exists in other parts of the brain. He says that while alcohol may impair your ability to physically do things, it actually impairs for a longer time your ability to simply pay attention. Even though one can still perfectly walk and maybe feels also confident that one can make the right decisions, right? There may already be um, serious um, effects on um, brain signaling that one is not aware of. The norepinephrine your body produces when active needs to be in balance or the effects of alcohol will also alter your decision making through withdrawals. If the signaling is too weak, that is for the performance not good. But if the signaling is actually too strong, if it overshoots, so to speak, it is also not good for the performance. So it, 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 it requires a certain, a pretty precise balance. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Very interesting. Yeah. We've been talking about big changes coming. They are happening now, Adam. Yeah, they are happening now. We've got the colder air rushing into town. The wind is picking up. The cold front has arrived and get ready for the rain to gradually overspread all of South Texas. We're looking at the radar right now, and we have some moderate shower activity out there, some embedded heavier rain, especially in Wilson County, south side of Bear County. You get into Atascosa County along 281 there, north of Pleasanton. Some pretty hefty rain at the moment, even stretching eastward into Nixon. This is all being activated by the cold front that's moving into town. Earlier, we looked at Southern San Antonio, South Side, and even Southern Bear County, and we had a little more activity. It's tapered off just even uh, over the past half hour. Within 410 here, we have some spotty hit or miss showers. They're coming and going right now. They'll continue to do that. Again, this is all being activated by the cold front that's sliding southward, and most of the action is along and east of I-35. However, this is going to pick up in intensity and coverage as we go through the night. You look across the state, already some shower and even snow activity out west, but a lot of moisture out there, and this is all being driven by the upper level system that's going to give us our good burst of energy later tonight. It's still over northern Mexico off to our west, but it's going to be moving closer to us and provide that good lift overnight. Here's our future cast with what I think is a pretty good handle on the situation. By 10 o'clock, more shower activity. Basically, as we go through the evening and night, our rain chances just continue to climb and the rain is going to become more widespread. The showers more numerous and some embedded heavier rain as well. Look at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. More places than not getting rainfall in our area in South Texas. So it's looking good for a good soaking rain around an inch, give or take locally, and there will be some higher amounts here and there. The trick with this forecast is come tomorrow morning, the transition to a little bit of snow, and I think that's going to start out west along the Rio Grande, probably a little after sunrise tomorrow and then spread basically to the northeast on into parts of the hill country. And the big question here is, first of all, how long will they see some wet snow out to the west and northwest of San Antonio? But also how much moisture are they going to have once it's cold enough? And that's going to impact actual accumulations. I do think some roadways will be impacted in the hill country, especially the farther north and west you go of San Antonio. So here's that chance of snow, the odds map that we showed you yesterday. I like to look at this here in San Antonio. It's looking like a cold rain. Even as you just get into the hill country, Bernie Comfort. Uh, Pipe Creek, minimal chance of even a trace of snow. You got to get out to Del Rio, Rock Springs, Lakey, Western Kerr County. That's where we have the best chance. In terms of accumulations, I think closer to a trace around Del Rio, maybe up to an inch as you get up into the higher elevations there, northeast of Del Rio. But you get into northern Valverde County, Edwards County. This includes you, Rock Springs. We could tally up. A handful of inches there. We could be looking at three, maybe up to five inches of snow from this system, depending on where the little burst of it sets up tomorrow with the uh, heavier action. So that's something to watch. Travel not going to be good, basically west of Kerrville and north of Del Rio during the day tomorrow. 
Otherwise, look at the big temperature difference out there. 70s south of town, 40s north of town. Hello cold front and hello wind with that front. Gusts already in excess of 30 miles per hour will be gusting to 45 tonight increasing rain chances. It's going to be a cold rain down in the upper 30s late tonight and early tomorrow with widespread showers and then the rain chances start to really taper off after the noon hour and here in San Antonio a cold rain will only be 45 tomorrow with a gusty wind. Friday we clear out again sunny in 58 and then by the weekend we're back in the 60s and you'll forget all about that chance amazing. of snow out west then. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much, Adam. <laughs> All right, Spurs hosting the Lakers tonight. Will LeBron James be there? That is the big question, but we also just got word that LaMarcus Aldridge will not be there. When we come back, more about updating what happens tonight between the Spurs and the defending NBA champs. And new stars are born for the University of Texas in last night's Valero Alamo Bowl coming up. San Antonio Spurs will get their first crack at the defending NBA champions tonight when they host the Los Angeles Lakers twice over the next three days, but they will do it without LaMarcus Aldridge out with left a sore knee tonight. The other big question is going into tonight's game is will LeBron James be able to play? The Lakers have the four-time NBA champion listed as question with a sprained left ankle on his 36th birthday today, but get this, the Spurs will actually face the Lakers three times over the next five days. It's a challenge. You know, any competitor want to face that challenge, especially early on in the season. You know, you you got to want to embrace that. Um, you got to be ready for it. You know, it's a big test for us early on in the season to really measure um, where we at. You know, and there's no better way to do it against the defending cha champs. All right, time tonight, 730. Should have an update on them, uh, at least on the King, coming up at 6 o'clock. Texas Longhorns had to overcome an injury to their star quarterback Sam Ellinger in order to give Tom Herman his fifth straight victory in a bowl. In the process, two new stars were born at the Valero Alamo Bowl. The Texas Longhorns didn't waste any time getting on the scoreboard in their second straight appearance in the Valero Alamo Bowl when freshman B. John Robinson able to stretch it out for the first touchdown of the night against Colorado, 183 yards in the night. One by ground, how about one by air? Sam Ellinger to B. John Robinson for the 14-yard score and already has two touchdowns against the Buffaloes. Now, Colorado's turn facing fourth down at the two. Derek Broussard is able to fight his way into the end zone. It's a ball game again, 17 to 10. Texas at the half. Then the shocker. No Sam Ellinger to start the second half due to an injury to a throwing shoulder. And comes sophomore Casey Thompson to take over, and the Longhorns don't miss a beat. Fires a 13 yard touchdown pass to Joshua Moore. The pair team up again, this time on a 25 yarder in the third quarter that is ruled a catch. And the Longhorns are now up 31 to 10. In between, we got a glimpse of Sam Ellinger leading in the Longhorns locker room with what appears to be his arm in a sling. Let's hope it's not serious. Now, how about Thompson? He launches a 73-yard touchdown to Kelvante Dixon to finish off with four touchdowns on the night in the 55-23 to victory. I've been preparing for this moment since I set foot on campus, and, uh, you know, it, to me, it just felt like high school, you know. Football is football, uh, obviously, you know, at a higher level, but uh, I felt prepared. Casey came in, you know, when we needed him, uh, the most and made a big impact the way that he did. But I feel that how these guys made an impact in this game and what they can do leading forward, you know, in the offseason and for the next season is it's good to see what they did for this game. So the future looks very good for the Texas Longhorns. That was great to see. Yeah, it should be fun to watch next year. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. And that is all our time. Thank you so much for watching the news at five. World News is next. We'll see you back here for more local news headlines at 6 o'clock. Have a good evening.